Hi, I'm Jane from Poppy Patchwork and welcome to my quilt block series. In each of these videos I'm going to show you how to make a different block and they're all going to measure 12 inches. I hope you like this video, if you do click the like button and please let me know in the comment section below what other videos you'd like me to make. Let's get quilting. Hi, thanks for joining me today and today I'm going to show you how to make the crow's feet block. This is a 12 inch block and should finish at 12 and a half inches. This block is a little bit tricky, there are lots of pieces to put together. However, follow these instructions and I think you will find success. And if you'd like to know how to use this block in a quilt, please watch to the end of this video where I've got some illustrations to show you how to use it. Let's get started. In background fabric, you're going to need one four and three quarter inch square, four two and three quarter inch squares, and four three and a half inch squares. In fabric A, you're going to need one three and a half inch square and one five and a half inch square for making the half square triangles with the magic eight method. Or you're going to need four two and a half inch squares for the drawn line method. You'll need eight two inch squares. And in fabric B, you're going to need four two inch by three and a half inch rectangles and one four and three quarter inch square. Again, you're going to need one five and a half inch square for the magic eight method or four two and a half inch squares for the drawn line method. You also need four two and three quarter inch squares. And in fabric C, you're going to need four two inch squares. Making the half square triangles with the magic eight method. Use your two squares that measure five and a half inches. Draw a diagonal line in both directions on the back of one of the fabrics. As shown here, and pin the fabrics together. You need to sew a quarter inch seam down both sides of the line. So at my sewing machine, I always start with a little piece of fabric first, and this catches all that beginning stitching, which is a bit ugly sometimes. And now I'm sewing down one side of the line, sewing a quarter inch seam down one side. And now I'm going to sew down the sides of the other lines. So I'm going to do four in total. So now we're going to cut this into our eight half square triangles. So I've taken the fabric over to my rotating cutting board. And it's really important that we use a rotating cutting board because we don't want to move the pieces of fabric once we start cutting them. We want to be moving the board. As soon as we start moving the pieces of fabric, we're going to be introducing error. So we start by actually cutting through the stitching at that crossover point with a horizontal line. So I'm just lining that up and making sure it is exactly across that stitched line. Now I'm going to rotate the board around and do another horizontal cut. And 
and now I'm going to cut through one of my drawn lines and then I'm going to cut through my second drawn line and there you go we have eight half square triangles magic the magic eight method now if you don't have a rotating mat you can use a small cutting board and use that to turn your units around trimming the half square triangles using a speciality triangle square up ruler so with this ruler you leave your piece unfolded and then you line the stitching up with the mark on the ruler for the size of the unit you want to have. So in this case, we want to have a two inch piece. So I'm lining the stitching up with the two inch line on the ruler. And so I simply cut up one side and down the other side. And then I open out the unit and with a seam roller, I just press down on those seams. And then you just want to cut the dog ears off. Trimming the half square triangles using a standard ruler. Lay the 45 degree line on the ruler on top of your seam. Line the bottom and left edges at just a bit more than two inches. Trim along the top and right edges. Turn the unit round and lay the stitched line under the 45 degree line on the ruler. Line the bottom and left edges at exactly two inches. Trim the top and right edges. Repeat to make eight two inch half square triangles. Making the flying geese unit using the four at a time method. You will need one background fabric, which is four and three quarter inches square. And you will need four of the background bees, which are two and three quarter inches square. And you will need the opposite. So one large square in the opposite fabric and four small squares in the opposite fabrics. Draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of all the small squares, as shown here. Pin two small squares right sides together on the large square, as shown here, with a diagonal line running across the square and repeat that with the opposite sets of fabric. Sew a quarter inch seam on both sides of the line.
then cut along the drawn line. As shown. Press the seams towards the little triangles. And repeat with both colourways. Take the other small squares and place them in the remaining corners with the diagonal as shown. Sew a quarter inch seam on both sides of the line. Cut along the drawn line. And then press the seams towards the small triangles. Trimming the flying geese units using a speciality ruler. If you do not have a speciality ruler, I'll put a link in the top corner to a video on how to trim using a standard ruler. The speciality ruler has two markings on it. One for trim number one and one that says trim number two. So first of all, you're going to lay your piece underneath the ruler with the apex of the triangle pointing away from you and that is for trim number one and you're going to cut it to size C which is one and a half by three inches. So you line the apex of the triangle up with the lines on the ruler and then you simply cut up one side of the ruler and along the top of the ruler. Then you turn the unit and the ruler around and now you're going to do trim number two. So you line the apex of the ruler facing you and again you line it up for one and a half inches by three inches. And then again you simply cut up one side and along the top. Block layout. Lay out your units in the block layout. Join the flying geese to the rectangles, as shown, sew with a quarter inch seam. Return to block layout and press the seams towards the rectangles. Now join the half square triangles with the small squares, as shown. Return to the block layout and press the seams towards the squares. Join the units in the third column to the units in the fourth column. Return to the block layout. Join the units in the 5th column to the units in the 6th column. And return to the block layout.
press the units so that the seams lay in opposite directions. In columns, pin the bottom two rows and sew with a quarter inch seam matching the points. Return to the block layout. There's no need to press yet. In columns, pin the top row and sew with a quarter inch seam matching the points. and then return to the block layout. Join the bottom row in each of the columns. Return to the block layout and press. Pin the left hand side column to the centre column. And then pin the right hand side column to the centre column. Sew both seams with a quarter inch seam allowance and then return to the block layout. Then press these seams open. Congratulations, you have made the crow's feet block. Here are some quilt options. This is an illustration of the quilt repeating the same block. There is no sashing or borders, but the use of the white background fabric in a block allows the design and fabrics to stand out. This is an illustration of the quilt repeating the same block placed on point. There is no sashing or borders, but you would need to add blocks in background fabric in between the blocks shown here with the stars. And use setting triangles around the edges, again shown here with the stars. This is an illustration of the quilt repeating the same block but with sashing, cornerstones and borders. And finally, this is an illustration of a sampler quilt using some of the blocks from this quilt block series. The sashing in this quilt is in the white background fabric. The cornerstones and border is in a darker fabric to pop and frame the quilt. I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel. More of these videos will be posted, so please tune in. Thank you for watching and bye for now.